Hello! My name is Jay. Is it? Yes. My name is Jay. I'm one of the expert teachers here at PT Academic E2 Language. Let's have a look at writing write essay. This is method 2.0. Okay, just a few facts about the essay before we begin. First of all, on test day, you'll have to write one or two. And here's a funny little tip. If you if you do actually get two essays in the exam, one of them won't be marked. This is called seeding. It's a very clever little thing from Pearson and what they're doing is training up their computer algorithm. So you'll write two essays, only one will be marked, the other one will be used to train their algorithm. Problem is, you don't know which one. So you'll have to write two very good essays, but that's okay. I'm gonna teach you how to write a damn good essay, okay? The essay length will be between 200 and 300 words. Don't write 199 or 301 words. It's okay, you'll get 20 minutes to write each essay. Uh, and that should be sufficient time. That, that's gotta take into account planning, writing, and revision of the essay though. So hopefully you're a reasonably quick typer. The scoring for this task only contributes points to writing and I'm pretty sure that it contributes quite a few points to your writing score. In other words, it's important. Okie dokie. So let's talk about scoring. And first of all, just a bit of a warning. You will be scored zero. You'll get nothing if you don't write on topic. Or in other words, if you write off topic, you'll get zero for everything, okay? So you must make sure, and we'll talk about this as we go through this lesson, that you write about that question prompt, directly about that question prompt that you're given. You can't memorize an answer and bring it into you in your mind because if it is off topic, zero points. You'll also get zero if you don't write in English. Yeah, don't do that. Don't write your essay in Korean or, I don't know, French, for example. The algorithm won't like that. Don't write your essay all in capital letters. You will get zero for that. And you'll get zero if you don't write anything at all, of course. Let's look more closely at the scoring if you do in fact write an essay in English on topic. So you get scored on content, zero, one, two, or three points, and that means you're writing on topic. You are scored on development, structure, and coherence. And in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you a structure that is a super structure. It's really good. You'll get scored on length. That is, just write between 200 and 300 words, simple. General linguistic range, that means you have a variety of sentence structures and a variety of vocabulary, and you can articulate yourself precisely. You also score just on grammar, okay? So you get your plural nouns right, your prepositions right, your verb tenses, your past participles, all of that sort of stuff. Vocabulary range and spelling. Okay, importantly, the type of essay that you have to write on test day is an argumentative slash persuasive essay. That is, you're going to get some sort of controversial topic, right? I don't know, it'll be something about smoking cigarettes or playing video games or obesity or something like that, where you're going to have an opinion. Hopefully you've got an opinion on these topics. Uh, and what you're going to do is choose a side. So they're gonna have two sides, these prompts. You can argue for or you can argue against. And that's what you have to do in this essay. So it's argumentative. Now the essay prompt, they essay prompts, I should say, they differ in the way that they're written. But ultimately, again, it's all about writing an argumentative essay. However, you may have to respond to a question, agree or disagree with a particular point of view. You might have to take a side in an argument. You might have to describe a situation. I've never seen an essay like that. That looks interesting or you might have to write about the advantages or disadvantages of a particular opinion. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of ways that the question prompt might appear on test day. So this is what the screen's going to look like on test day. And if you read carefully here, it says, some people think that preparing for an, for an English exam is best done in a school. 
Others believe that studying online is the most effective way of preparing. You can see the two sides to the argument here. You have a group of people who think that they should prepare for their tests in a school, and another group thinking they should study online. You're going to have to decide which one you agree with and argue for that side, okay? So it says choose which position you most agree with and discuss why you chose that position. Support your point of view with details from your own experience, observations, or readings. Let's look at the same, it's the same question, but it's just formulated in a different way, okay? This one comes as like a, a quote or a statement. It says, quote, preparing for an English exam online is more effective than preparing in a traditional school discuss the extent to which you agree or disagree with this statement. So again, you've got two sides to the argument. This one's saying online study is more effective. What do you think? Yes, no. Or do you think school studying in a school is more effective for your exam prep? Okay, cool. So that's sort of how the question prompts might appear on test day. But again, it's always argumentative persuasive. All right. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to look at a high scoring uh, essay. This one would get, I think, a perfect score. Um, I did take the PT once upon a time and I did get a 94 writing, luckily. Uh, so, and, and I should say that the structure that we've taught thousands and thousands of students now, many, many students have come back with 90, so this works. Okay, so we've got a four paragraph essay here. What we're going to do is I'm going to teach you about the structure that sits behind this essay. You can think about it like the skeleton and what we're doing is putting on the meat of the skeleton. That's weird. Okay, it's like a coat hanger and what we're doing is putting on the coat over the coat hanger. Hang on, that's really stupid. It's like the scaffolding of a building and what we're doing is putting on the outside of the building. Something like that. Anyway, it's the essay structure and it's powerful if you remember it. Okay, but before we look more closely at that essay structure, if you've taken the PT before and been unsuccessful, or if you've never taken PT before and you're a bit concerned about what scores you're gonna get, check out our mini mock test on e2language.com. It gives you test simulation and lots of feedback on your performance. It'll be very helpful for you before test day or before your next test. All right, let's check out that method, that structure. So how do we write an introduction to an argumentative essay that'll score us a 90? Okay, first of all, we're looking at that first paragraph there. This is the introduction. And it's got three parts. Not necessarily three sentences, because you might expand the sentence and write two or three sentences for each part, but it's got three distinct parts. This is what you have to memorize. So part one is where you give some background information on the question prompt, okay? For example, I said, English examinations are notoriously difficult. Okay, so I've just given some really broad, short, simple sentence, like a background statement about English exams. I'm not talking about their effectiveness or classroom study or online study. I've just written a very, yeah, pretty straightforward sentence about English exams. They're notoriously difficult. And then I've gone a little bit deeper and I've said many candidates not only fail on their first attempt, but some continue to fail multiple times. Okay, background to the overall question prompt. Now I'm gonna come in and drill in a little bit closer to that question prompt. And what I'm going to do is rewrite the question prompt in my own words, okay? Remember the question prompt said, uh, you know, some people think you should study online, some people think you should study in a school. Here's what I wrote. There are two main ways to prepare. You can prepare in a school or you can pre prepare online. Again, you can see my language, my sentence structures are straightforward. What I'm really concentrating on is being precise in what I say, using the right grammar and the right vocabulary. You don't have to be long-winded and sophisticated and use fancy vocab and stuff like that. Just make sure you're on topic, you're answering the question, and you're clear. Clarity is key to all of this, structure and clarity. Okay, part three is where we tell the reader our argument. Okay, what do we think here? Which side are we on? 
I wrote, this essay will argue that online preparation is a far better choice for candidates who wish to succeed faster. Okay, so you can see my argument here. I've gone for online preparation, of course. Okay, and I've made that very explicit. It's not a mystery story of which side I've chosen. I very clearly said, I'm for this side. You should too. Don't be nuanced and take half a side and half a side and blah, blah, blah. Just make it very basic. You've only got 20 minutes. Just choose the simplest thing to argue for and argue for it. Even if you don't really agree with that, it doesn't matter. Cool, that is the introduction. If you're not yet a subscriber to this YouTube channel, I strongly recommend that you become one. It's going to improve your life immensely because um, you're going to get to see wonderful videos about PTE Academic and then you'll pass your PTE, then you'll uh, be able to get a great job and you'll just be happy ever after. This could be the starting point. Okay. Let's talk now about how to write our body paragraphs. And we want to write two body paragraphs. These are the paragraphs. And sitting behind these paragraphs here, sitting behind all of these words, is that skeleton, that structure. Um, and you can use this for any question prompt. This structure that I'm teaching you, doesn't matter if you get a question about cigarette smoking, education, politics, space exploration, you use this structure every time. Okay, and the good thing about this is it's not a template. You don't have to memorize, you know, a, 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 an essay that has gaps because that puts huge amounts of pressure on you on test day. Memorizing, plus, as I mentioned, if you write slightly off topic, boom, the computer gives you a zero. If you come in there with a structure as opposed to a template, you're going to do much better because the structure is flexible to any topic. All right, body paragraphs. How do we write these? So we're going to have four parts to our body paragraphs. Part one, which is, you know, it's always going to be sentence one or maybe sentence two included, will introduce the main idea of the paragraph. It's an introductory sentence. It's going to tell the reader what the paragraph is about. Again, no mystery stories, make it clear. Part two will give some additional information about that main, main idea. Then we're going to give an example and then we're going to conclude the paragraph. So let me introduce the main idea of this paragraph. Hopefully you'll see very clearly what this is about. While there are several issues that students face when preparing for their English language tests in schools, the main one is a lack of personalized learning. This paragraph is going to be about personalized learning. I've said some waffly start at, stuff at the start, but really what I've done is I've, I've thought of when I was planning, and I'll talk to you about planning in a second, I thought about what's this paragraph going to be about in like one or two words, personalized learning, okay? And this paragraph is going to be about personalized learning. I'm not now going to deviate and talk about something else. I'm just going to talk about personalized learning, okay, throughout the whole paragraph. And I'm going to extrapolate and expand upon that idea, that central idea of that paragraph. Please do that. Cool. So let me give you some more information about personalized learning. In a classroom, there can be up to 30 students studying at once. This means that the teacher spends very little time focusing on the students' weak areas. You can see how that language although it didn't mention personalized learning, is about personalized learning, focusing on students' weak areas. So that was my additional information. Now I'm going to provide an example. Research suggests that teacher to student time in a classroom can be as little as two minutes. You might also notice that what I'm doing here is I'm arguing for online learning because it's, um, it's got better personalized learning. But at the same time, I'm beating the out of the other side of the argument. I'm really picking on, teasing, if you will, the other side about classroom learning. I'm saying classroom learning lacks personalized learning. Um, you know, the teacher to student time is minimal. So I'm arguing for this side of the argument while um, punching up, beating up, boxing, kicking the other side of the argument. I really want to swear here, but I won't. 
Okay, now I'm going to conclude this paragraph. Clearly, this is an insufficient amount of time to address student errors if one wishes to be successful. Cool, so what have I done? I've written a well-structured paragraph that introduces the main idea of the paragraph in the first part. I've given some additional information, I've given an example, and then I've concluded the paragraph in a single sentence there. This is a strong paragraph structure. This is how you should write your paragraphs on test day. Mine was a little bit sort of nuanced here. Um, I went into quite a bit of detail. Uh, let me show you a second body paragraph. So again, four parts. I'm going to introduce the main idea of the paragraph. I'm going to give some additional information. I'm going to give an example. Then I'm going to conclude the paragraph. Let's have a look. So I'm going to introduce the main idea. You should be able to understand what this paragraph is going to be about from this single sentence. In addition to tailored learning, online exam preparation also offers greater flexibility. 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 I think this paragraph is going to be about flexibility. I hope so. So now I'm going to give some additional information about flexibility. In today's day and age, many people are far too busy to travel to a location to study. Online learning offers these people convenience. Well, convenience, flexibility are synonyms, so that kind of works. I'm going to give an example here. For example, at e2language.com, which you should might want to visit, you can log into our daily live PT classes on your phone from anywhere in the world. Now I'm going to conclude. This flexibility allows anyone to have the best possible exam preparation no matter where they are located. So this one, this paragraph was clearly for uh, online learning. I'm arguing for online learning. And I did mention right at the beginning, um, did I? No, I didn't. I just went all for online learning. In that first paragraph, I was mentioning classroom-based learning and again, punching it, but um, cool. Hopefully you can see the structure of the body paragraphs within that example. Okay, let's talk about the plan because the plan is critical. Before you start writing your essay, you need to think of the, what your two paragraphs will be about, really. And you should be able to um, you should be able to summarize these ideas down into a single word for each paragraph or a single short phrase, okay? Okay, let's have a look at how I planned this essay because what you definitely need to do before you start writing is have those two key ideas, those two ideas for each paragraph in your mind before you start because you're not going to end up with a good coherent essay if you just start typing without Firstly, thinking through what it is you're going to say. So just to reboot your memory, the question prompt said, preparing for an English exam online is more effective than preparing in a traditional school. Here's my plan. What I did was I formulated that question prompt into a question for myself. And I asked myself, why is computer-based test prep better than classroom training? My paragraph one came up with the idea of personalization personalized learning, okay? My paragraph two is going to be about flexibility, convenience. That's it. That's all my plan is. I've just come up with two ideas, clear, distinctly different ideas for each paragraph relating to why online test prep is better than classroom-based test prep. That's it. That's all I need to do for the plan. Now that I have that, and now that I know how to write the uh, introduction, the body paragraphs, and soon the conclusion, I can create a really nice essay. Okay, if you need more than just method help, like if you need more help than just the, the structure and how to approach questions, maybe your English isn't that good, then you should check out this website, which is e2school.com. It's like the sister website to e2language test prep. And what it does is it builds your fundamental English language skills like your vocabulary, your grammar, your pronunciation, your general English, listening, reading, writing, speaking, even spelling is on its way. This is a great website uh, if you need more than just test prep. Okay, let's look at how to write the conclusion. So the conclusion will have two parts. Firstly, we're going to summarize those two main points. Remember I had the two main points? Well, I'm going to repeat them again in the conclusion as the first part. 
Then I'm just gonna end with a strong statement. So let's go through this. In conclusion, preparing for an English exam online is a superior experience in terms of personalized learning and convenience. So I've given my opinion again. My opinion is throughout the entire essay. My opinion is in the intro, in each paragraph, and in the conclusion. It's just, it's a strong argumentative essay. Then I'm gonna end with a strong statement, which would say, if I were you, I would consider preparing with E2 language. This is, I wouldn't write that in the exam, of course. I'm just being a bit uh, frivolous, a bit silly, but um, end with a strong statement. And as for using personal pronouns like I, that's completely fine. Just don't overdo it, okay? Cool, all right. We have just looked at how to structure up from head to toe your essay, from beginning to end, including the intro, body paragraphs, and conclusion. If you need some feedback on your writing, because maybe you're a bit unsure if you're making mistakes, or you're a bit unsure what the mistakes you're making are, you can actually submit your essay through e2language.com to one of our expert teachers, who will give you comprehensive feedback and a detailed report so you know what to do better, how to improve, how to fix your mistakes. It also works for speaking as well. And if you're really struggling, like you really need some help or you don't have much time, uh, you can take a one-on-one -on -one tutorial. These are 45 minutes in length, one-on-one, -on -one, done on Zoom, which is a program like Skype, through the computer with one of our expert teachers who will actually go through your essay with you and give you some really helpful feedback in real time about how to prepare. This is the fastest way to improve. Okay, so overall, this is what we looked at. And you might wanna take a photo on your phone, which is part one in the introduction, give some background to the question prompt. Part two, rewrite the question prompt in your own words. Part three, tell the reader what your argument is. And you can even mention your two main points here if you like. Paragraph one and two, introduce the main idea of the paragraph. Part two, give some additional information. Part three, give an example. Part four, conclude the paragraph. In the conclusion, you wanna summarize your two main points and again, tell the reader what your argument is. Then end with a strong, punchy statement. Cool. All right, uh, if you need some practice questions, you wanna join our live classes, you wanna give some, uh, submit some writing feedback or take a tutorial, check out e2language.com. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Jay. Feel free to leave a lovely comment in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.